In this video, AVR assembly is used to program timers of the ATmega328 microcontroller, where different applications will be demonstrated. Microcontroller ATmega328 has three timers, two 8-bit and one 16-bit timer. We start with timer 0, which is an 8-bit timer, and it has the following programmable registers. It has the timer counter register, which is an 8-bit counter, that counts from 0 to 255 and when the count value exceeds 255 the timer overflow flag is set indicating the end of the count timer 0 also has output compare register which is an 8-bit register that stores an 8-bit value which is compared with the count value in the counter so during the count when the two values are equal through this comparator the output uh, compare flag will be set. Timer 0 also has a timer counter control register and the byte in this uh, register will determine the mode of operation of timer 0 for example whether TCNT is a counter or a timer and also the byte in TTCR will determine the frequency or clock frequency of timer 0 by determining the prescalar values. Now the timer 0 registers are located in I.O. register memory. Therefore we can use the assembly in and out instructions to access the registers. A detailed block diagram of timer 0 is shown here. The multiplexer circuit provides at the output the clock signal needed to run the control unit of timer 0. And the multiplexer is controlled by these three bits here. The clock select bits which are available uh, within the timer counter control register. So a 3-bit value here will determine one of the clock inputs will be available at the output. So for example a value of 0, 0, 0 means no clock, it means timer 0 is off. A value of 0, 0, 1 means we have clock input which is the system clock will be available at the output and we could also have any of the other inputs such as clock over 8, over 64, over 256, over 1024. When the clock select value is 110 or 111 then we will have a clock signal from an external source fed through pin T0 and if the value is 110 then the clock will be uh, triggering at falling edge and when the value is 111 it means the clock will be triggering at rising edge. And now let's see how we can program the timer 0 uh, registers. We start with the timer counter register which is an 8-bit counter that will count from 0 to 255 and then repeat. And we can store an initial value into this uh, register by using the out instruction. So here for example register R20 has a value of 0 by using the clear instruction and we copy the initial value into the TCNT register using the out instruction. Next we have the timer counter control register and the byte in this uh, register will determine the mode of operation for the timer and the uh, clock source for the timer. For the mode of operation a value of 0, 0 will give us normal mode which means uh, timer 0 is a normal counter and when we have a value of 0, 1 it means we have CTC mode which is a clear timer on compare match and when we have a value of 1, 0 or 1, 1 which means we have pulse width modulation. As an example let's say we store this byte in the TCCR register then this value 101 means the clock source is clock over 1024 and a value of 00, 0 here means we have normal mode and the rest of the bits are at logic don't care and this is the assembly code needed to program TCCR so we load into register uh, 20 a value of 5 and then using the out instruction copy this uh, value into the control register and to stop the timer we just send 0 to the control register. 
Inside the timer counter in trough flag register, we are concerned with these two bits here related to timer 0. The timer overflow flag bit and the output compare flag bit. The timer overflow flag bit is set based on overflow occurring, which means that the count has exceeded 255. So 0 means no overflow, 1 means overflow. The output compare flag bit is set or reset based on the comparison between the count value in the counter register and the byte within the uh, output compare register. So 0 means no match, 1 means there is a match. As an example, let's say we want to check the status of the TOV flag. So in assembly, we use the in instruction to get the byte in the register TI. FR and copy it into register 20 and then using instruction SBRS which is skip if bit in register is set by checking the value of the TOV flag if 0 means no overflow then this instruction will be ignored and the jump is executed and we have a loop which will continue until the TOV bit becomes 1 means overflow has occurred then the SBRS will be executed and the jump instruction will be skipped and the next instruction executed. Before we can check uh, uh, the status of the flag in another run we need to clear the TOV flag by writing a 1 into the TIFRO register. In this demonstration we want to program timer 0 to operate in normal mode and the timer counter register will start counting from 0 to 255 and then on the next count it will trigger the timer overflow flag which will be triggered every 16.4 millisecond this in turn will be used to toggle an LED connected to a digital pin of the Arduino total time 16.4 millisecond is calculated by taking the clock frequency 16 megahertz dividing it by the chosen prescaler 1024 and then taking the reciprocal of the result which gives us 64 microsecond for the time per count so the time it takes for each count is 64 microsecond so the total time would be to take the 64 microsecond multiplied by 256 which gives us the total time 16.4 millisecond now let's look at the assembly code which will be used to toggle a, an LED connected to digital pin D13 of the Arduino and the delay between each toggle will be provided by timer 0. Inside subroutine timer 0 we will first initialize these bytes into registers R16 and R17. Subsequently these two registers will be exclusive ORed in order to toggle the pin PB5 which is digital pin D13 of the Arduino. Then we set to pin BB5 for output. Next we call subroutine delay timer 0 which will apply the required delay and in order to increase the delay we will call this uh, subroutine 10 times through this loop. Next we exclusive OR the bytes in registers R17 and R16 and then I'll put the byte in R17 to port B in order to toggle pin PB5 and then we jump to label L1 and repeat the process and we have a toggled LED inside subroutine delay timer 0 where timer 0 is programmed to give us a 16.4 millisecond delay we initialize the uh, timer 0 counter with a count value of 0 and then we program the timer counter control register so that we have uh, timer 0 in normal mode and the prescaler is 1024. Next, using this loop, we will check the status of the timer overflow flag. So we first copy the byte in timer interrupt register into R20. And then using the skip instruction, we will check the value of TOV. If the value is 0, then this instruction will be ignored and the jump is executed and we have a loop that will continue until the value of TOV becomes 1 and the skip will be executed 
So this instruction will be skipped and the next instruction executed. Next, we stop timer 0 by clearing the timer control register. And then we clear the TOV flag within the timer interrupt flag register. Next, we will program timer 0 in CTC mode. Clear timer and compare match. And this is the byte we need to store in the control register to give us CTC and prescaler 1024. In CTC mode, the OCR register, the output compare register, has a value of 9, which is then compared with the count value in the timer counter register. When they are equal, this will then trigger the timer overflow flag. And the flag is triggered every 0.64 millisecond. Subroutine delay timer 0 from the previous code is modified uh, using CTC mode to give us a delay of 0.64 millisecond. So first we need to uh, initialize the uh, timer 0 counter with a value of 0 and then we store in the OCR register the value of 9 and then we program the uh, control register so that timer 0 is in CTC mode and prescaler uh, 1024. Next using this indefinite loop we check the status of the output compare flag uh, bit. So first we need to copy the byte in the uh, timer interrupt flag register into R20 and then using the SBRS uh, instruction we check the value of OCF flag if the value is 0, then this instruction will be ignored and the jump is executed and we have a loop that will continue until the value of the OCF uh, flag is set. So this instruction will be executed and the jump will be skipped and the next instruction executed. Finally, we stop timer 0 and then we clear the OCF flag so that timer 0 is ready for the next run. In my next video, I will program the 16-bit timer 1 using assembly. Thank you for watching.